Hi, I'm Shannon and welcome to part five of this five part series of daily music tips presented by the Cape Town Music Academy. This one is entitled, If the Box Fits, or If It Fits the Box. I would like to call on my assistant here, Master Ninja Smarty Pants. To the stage, please, Master Ninja Smarty Pants. Okay, we're gonna have to try that again. Would you mind helping me here? On three, one, two, three. Master Ninja Smarty Pants! Woohoo! Hello, Master Ninja Smarty Pants. Hello. Thank you for joining me today. Are you good? I'm great. You're great. Okay. Would you mind assisting me with something? What? I'd like you to go over to that box over there. Yes. Thank you. What is that? A box. A box. Is there anything in the box? No. No. Okay, Master Ninja Smarty Pants, would you mind putting this in that box? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Thank you, Master Ninja Smarty Pants. Would you mind now putting this box in that box? Thank you very much. Perfect fit, I see. It's easy. You just have to say, go in the box, go in the box. Aha, you just have to say go in the box and it goes in the box. Fantastic. Can I have the box back, please? The black box? You can keep the red box for me. Thank you. All right. Next, I would like you to put this ball in the box. Wow. Yes. Hmm. Oh dear, that's not looking so good. What's going on there? The box is bulging. The box is bulging. Oh dear, we've lost the box. <laughs> Would you mind trying again? Putting the ball in the box. What did you say earlier? Go in the box. Push it in the box. Come on, get it in. Get it in. Come on, get it in the box. Oh dear. Yes, so the box is indeed bulging. And what happens if we eventually get the ball in the box? What happens to the shape of the ball? Okay. You see the, this box? Yes, I see that box. It's squared. It's squared, yes. If the ball goes in the square box, uh -huh. then the ball turns square. <gasps> the ball turns square. And then what happens when we try and roll the ball, Mr... Ninja Smarty Pants. And that was bump, like bump. Okay. So in fact, we changed the shape of the ball to fit in the box. Thank you, Master Ninja Smarty Pants. Woohoo, a big round of applause. Master Ninja Smarty Pants. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, it is that obvious. To try and squash something into a form which doesn't suit it or doesn't take on the whole shape of it is never going to work. No matter how hard we try and how much we force it and how much we push it. And as Master Ninja Smarty Pants says, even if we do get it in, we've changed the original shape to suit a form that doesn't suit it. And it loses its inherent characteristics. So by no means am I saying that uh, there, there are bad ways of doing things or this is not the way to teach improvised music or do improvised music. It's whether or not it resonates with you. How you learn, how you absorb information. And that has to do with your brain and all the parts of you and how you've always uh, resonated with music. That is the thing to discover of, is this working? Is this way of me absorbing music or creativity and expressing myself, is it working or am I forcing myself into something that doesn't suit me? And we go through, again, different uh, phases of this. Um, we might need different things at a different point in time. It has to change. We have to constantly evaluate it and say, is this working? I understand my experiences are pretty extreme. And perhaps you are a woman who's never had to deal with what I've dealt with. Perhaps you've never had the same problems I've had. And perhaps as an artist, you've always found your way. And oh, what is she talking about? It's just practice and do the work. If it was that easy, we'd have a lot more creative people around. But it's not just about music. 
It's about understanding the game, understanding how it all works, but most of all being on top of yourself. So if you can get yourself, keep yourself intact and create the strongest possible version of self, then when you deliver your truth, it is with the strength of intention that many people who are successful are able to do. They are able to deliver uh, because they really believe what they do. And by the same token, once you found that in yourself, it speaks for itself. So this is not about being a woman. This is not about uh, my experiences per se. It's about the fact that maybe some of the stuff resonates with you. And maybe you're not a person, you're a little out of the box. Maybe you don't fit these forms. Maybe your way of seeing life is different. You know, maybe you don't want your kid to play video games, even though everybody else's kids do, or have a TV, and you drive, ride a bike instead of having a car. It's about who you are and being able to stand for what you believe in. And perhaps sometimes that takes a little bit of swimming upstream. You certainly don't need to move to the other end of the world like I did and make drastic measures because also there are many people who probably you would resonate with if you just had a look, if you stopped seeking uh, out the people who you feel you should seek out, oh, they're the best, they're the greatest, instead of just actually taking note of, like, actually, who do I resonate with? How, how do I look around my circumstances and see maybe there are people that see music and creativity the same way that I do? Stick with those people. It doesn't necessarily mean it's music. It's any kind of creative field. So in the 9th of August, 1956, 20,000 women went to the union buildings in South Africa to protest the past laws. There is immense strength in numbers. I think in our industry, we don't have human resources or people to call out other people and say, hey, you, you're not being cool here or anything like that. So we have to take the onus upon ourselves. We have to go to our own little union buildings first and say, you know, are, are these uh, my biases, my opinions, all of those things, uh, are, they, are they fair? Is what I'm doing projecting uh, the way I relate to other musicians? Am I clean or am I prejudiced or biased? Do I have opinions? Do I have a really preconceived idea of a girl with a saxophone, for instance, is that a cover of an uh, album cover from the 60s? You know, before she's played a note, you, if you have that idea in your mind, or whatever it is. We have to acknowledge our inherent biases. And then say, okay, I'm going to try and clean up myself. And we all do this little um, cleansing. And then we can work towards uh, a fair game in this industry, that there's place for everybody. It's not this comparison or standing on each other, that we can actually just share and enjoy the differences we have and our different learning processes. So thank you very much to Cape Town Music Academy again for this opportunity. If anybody wants to make contact, uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, my youth orchestra, Akosuso Ungdom, um, Oslo Ungdom Orchestra that I work with. Uh, please have a look at the little documentary if you're interested in my way of teaching and uh, working with them. It's called Omo Spiele Samen Som Sesel. So to play together as yourself, it's very much in line with what I'm talking about here. Um, we have a, a CD out called Oasis of Bad Vibes, and uh, my band will be releasing a CD uh, later in the year called, um, uh, it's called Lila, my band, and the CD is called The Land in Between. Again, musically reflecting a lot of what I am talking about. So I'd like to say a very big thank you to Master Ninja Smarty Pants also for his contribution. Thank you very much, Master Ninja Smarty Pants, and hope to see you soon again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.